All right, Sky News contributor, Herald Sun columnist Steve Price joins me now. Steve, thanks for your time. Look, this Optus debacle affected more than 10 million Australians today. I'm with Optus as well. Um, everyone, you know, was affected because your life is completely lived online, whether it's the apps on your phone, being able to call people, um, not to mention small businesses reported 400,000 small businesses who couldn't operate properly this morning. What's your view on the extent to which Optus will have to give compensation to the businesses and others affected? Well, Shari, great to see you again. This is a PR disaster on steroids when you think about it. I mean, you mentioned there that they had that hack a year ago. I don't think anyone got properly compensated out of that. And here we go again. Uh, and I heard the interview originally done by the CEO on Radio 3RW in Melbourne just after lunchtime. Now, she'd not been available all day, so she, w she was not available for breakfast radio, morning radio. She then seemed to be reading from some PR sheet that had been handed out so she could use all these terms. And she even used the term, and can you believe this, that Optus was customer champion, or a mm. customer champion is the policy that they have for the company. I mean, none of their customers felt like champions today. And this really is going to be a major issue because, as you said, the Fin Review reporting the board was here and the timing's horrible given that they were here a year ago when that hack happened. And I heard talkback callers today, Shari, uh, saying that at major Westfield shopping centres around Australia, uh, there were queues of people outside the Telstra store yes. all wanting to urgently get off Optus and sign up to Telstra. So it's going to be a financial punish for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that was the same in Sydney today as well, those queues outside the Telstra stores. Amid all the chaos, uh, Steve, it was reported today in the Daily Mail that a photo shoot took place at the mansion of the Optus CEO, Calabaya Rosemarin. It was staged for the architect who renovated the Vaucluse home. Look, this is very bad timing. The photographs splashed across the Daily Mail as uh, flowers and, and other things were brought into her home. Talk about karma coming to get you. I mean, the timing couldn't have been worse for that family. I mean, no one begrudges the fact that they've got a nice house in Vaucluse, but uh, the fact that they let that photo shoot go ahead was again a PR disaster for the CEO and, and the Optus company. I mean, Australians, as you say, are wedded to their mobile phones and what you want is reliability. Now, I'm mm. with Telstra, luckily, so I wasn't affected. But, I mean, if you were trying to contact somebody today, an elderly, elderly relative, I mean, you have that situation where they've got uh, alarm devices that, that are loaded into Optus. If you have a fall at home, you had hospitals who couldn't operate, you had little coffee shops who were having to write out IOUs. I heard one woman today say she had served 100 customers hoping that they were honest enough to come back and pay her tomorrow. It's a PR disaster for Optus. And uh, you saw in the share price, Ross Greenwell would reported just before you, that Singtel's share price in Singapore has gone down as well and Telstra's share price went up. It's a complete disaster for that company and you'd have to say the future of that CEO has to be in question. Yeah, well, and, and also we need still a proper explanation as to what went wrong today. Optus still hasn't answered that question. When you've got 10.2 million Australians affected, they have to say, well, fine, they've said it wasn't a cyber attack. So, so what was it and how do they know that the problem's not going to happen again? Now, Steve, of course, we saw the 13th rate rise yesterday. New research today indicating that this rise could be the tipping point that means that some homes or some households will lose their homes, that they will no longer be able to make their mortgage repayments. Also reports in The Australian today that say that RBA has effectively cancelled Christmas. Uh, there, some economists predict we're still to see another rate rise at the next board meeting on December 5 because inflation just isn't under control. I tell you what stood out for me today. The Daily Telegraph did some great numbers. You got a $750,000 mortgage uh, and you add up the 13 interest rate rises that have happened since May last year. You are now paying, uh, after tax, $1,815 more a month on your mortgage. So, you know, in rough, rough terms, $450 after tax a week. Now, if you're on a $750,000 mortgage, I mean, that, that's not a mansion in places like Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Melbourne or Perth. And so you were probably living pretty close to the mark 
when you signed up to that mortgage anyway to mm. have a $750,000 mortgage, I think a lot of people are going to have to cancel Christmas. I mean, you're spending on things like Christmas presents is going to be brought into question. Now, people say, oh, well, you know, this is just people over-exaggerating. Well, no, it's not. And there's still a hell of a lot of people, thousands of Australians, who are still due to come off fixed mortgages, which is mm. going to even make the problem worse. And a if we get Steve... another one of these in December... Mm. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm just going to point out that it's not just the mortgages that have gone up. It's every facet of our lives is more expensive. And for people who were just making ends meet already, having these rate rises, 13th, potentially a 14th, plus their electricity bills, plus the cost of petrol, plus the cost of groceries and everyday items, life just becomes too expensive in Sydney. And we all concentrate on mortgages, don't we? But don't forget that every small business in the country also has bank loans and their interest rate payments go up as well. So mm. it's impacting on the small business community just yep. as badly. I mean, we are, no doubt about it, in a cost of living crisis. And I, I, I don't know about you, Shari, but I just don't see the urgency in the new Albanese government led by Treasurer Chalmers to do something about it rather than just getting the Reserve Bank to hit people who are trying to pay off a mortgage over the head every month. And as uh, we spoke about last night on the program, there are concerns that the Albanese government's policies, like a big Australia, are making the issue, making inflation even worse. Now, let's move on to another topic. I couldn't believe this story today. The Australian Defence Force... Australian Defence Force is renaming its drone fleet because it's trying to scrap gender-specific language across the armed forces. So this exclusive story in The Australian Today, it says that what was previously known as unmanned aircraft systems, unmanned aircraft systems are now going to be called uncrewed aircraft systems. Unmanned, apparently offensive, now it's uncrewed. Come on, Steve, this is ridiculous. It's beyond belief. And when you, when you think about it, to be brutally honest about this, you know, we're in the middle of... Uh, a, a very ugly conflict in Ukraine with the Russian invasion. We're in, in the middle of the horror that is unfolding in the Middle East and we had the terror attack on Israel and now the response. And a lot of those conflicts are using drones. Does anybody in the ADF and sitting on their velvet cushions in Canberra in, in the top brass's office believe it's an appropriate time to even be talking about this? It is completely ridiculous. Does anyone really think, when you're using drones in a military sense, that that term even matters? I mean, where does this garbage actually come from, Shari? I mean, look, we all know that the top ranks of the Defence Force in Australia are a protected species, but seriously, if Richard Miles doesn't pick up the phone and tell those blokes to shut up, I don't know what he's doing.